The journey from being one of the best basketball players to ever come out of Atlanta, Georgia, to reaching his goal to make it in the NBA is truly an inspiring story. This is a player who had an insane amount of potential coming out of college, but was told by an executive that he was too smart to play in the NBA prior to getting drafted, all because of his intellectual passion and drive to make a difference in today's society. This is the Jalen Brown story. Jalen Brown was born on October 24th, 1996 in marietta georgia to mother michelle brown and father marcellus brown along with his older brother quentin now in the 90s brown's father actually pursued a successful career as a heavyweight boxer and standing at seven foot tall Marcellus managed to achieve a 31 and 18 with one draw career record along with 25 knockouts and even made a comeback at the age of 48 years old to show his sons that he never gave up on his dreams so they were to never give up on theirs but growing up just as a child Jalen was inspired by his mother who got her PhD from the University of Michigan. Jalen will always value his education first and wanted to make use of his high academic gifts while being a stellar athlete on the basketball court, which led Jalen to attend Wheeler High School in Marietta, Georgia. And as a junior in 2014, he went on to win the 2014 FIBA Americans Championship gold medal as part as the USA Basketball Men's 18U National Team. And with this NBA ready frame at such a young age, along with his athleticism and dominant traits to his game, it easily made him a five-star recruit. But what really made Brown different than a lot of high school talent around the nation was that he always participated in off the court activities, such as him becoming the captain of the high school chess team while taking high level classes. But by Jalen's senior year at Wheeler, right out of the gate, he was just a man amongst boys and it was simply looking way too easy for him. His team was competing on the national stage throughout that year, matching up against talent like Ben Simmons, Harry Giles, and Malik Monk. It was no question around this time regarding Brown being an NBA future lottery pick. He went on to average 28 points and 12 rebounds per game while being able to lead his team to a 30-2 record and a 6A state title. He was ranked fourth in the ESPN Top 100, right behind players like Ben Simmons, Scal Labissier, and Brandon Ingram. And by the end of his senior season, Brown was awarded Georgia Mr. Basketball, Gatorade Player of the Year, and All-USA Player of the Year, while being a 2015 McDonald's All-American. And by this time, he pretty much had all the big time schools after him. I'm talking Kentucky, North Carolina, UCLA. With all these programs in his favor to choose from, the five-star recruit would then sign a letter of intent to play basketball at the University of Cal. And his reason for doing so was because out of the list of schools, it was just the best educational school for him. And as a freshman, Jalen took doctrine level classes. But now on the court, he would go on to have a pretty solid freshman season, putting up 15 points, five rebounds, and two assists, allowing him to be on the Pac-12 all freshman team and Pac-12 All-Conference, but with Jalen only being able to shoot 29% from three and with him needing to improve his consistency and decision making, NBA scouts pretty much saw right through that. They were concerned about his high level of intelligence. Even an NBA assistant GM said that Brown's high level of intelligence could come off as intimidating to some NBA general managers and coaches on the fact that Brown was very intellectually curious, but with a very high upside, and with his athleticism while being 6'6 with a 7'1 wingspan, it was just hard to overlook. But prior to Jalen entering the 2016 NBA draft, he was on some draft boards that had him as high as the sixth pick. 
but would actually go third to the Boston Celtics in the 2016 NBA Draft. But with the team finishing fifth the previous year in the Eastern Conference, while also having a pretty established roster at the time, Brown was only able to play 17 minutes per game, averaging 7 points and 3 rebounds. But he improved it during the playoffs, where he upped it to 9 points and 3 rebounds but ended up losing to the Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals. But going into his second season with additions like Jason Tatum and Kyrie Irving, Jalen increased his average to 15 points, nine rebounds, and two assists a game. But when Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving got hurt, the Celtics young core really rose above by making the Eastern Conference Finals. And Brown would up his average to a shocking 20 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. But going into his third season in the NBA, with Kyrie and Hayward coming back from injuries, Jalen's minutes would be reduced, only averaging 13 points, while his team did have an underwhelming tight postseason and was shut out by the Milwaukee Bucks in the second round. But here's where Jalen started to show his gifts and talents off the court. He became the youngest ever to give a lecture at Harvard University Graduate School, talking about topics having to do with issues surrounding America's educational system. But Brown hasn't stopped there. He's even became a MIT fellow. As a child, he always wanted to show his versatility whether if that was on the court or the educational reform. Brown has even became the youngest vice president of the National Basketball Association. With Kyrie Irving and Al Horford gone, during the 2019 offseason, the Celtics managed to acquire Kemba Walker to pair up with Brown and Tatum. But this was the season where Jalen really started to come into his own and all around being a solid player averaging 20 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists. During the 2020 NBA bubble, he really showcased his two-way ability, and they would take the Heat 6 games in the Eastern Conference Finals, but did end up losing the series. Going into the next season, Jalen would make another leap, averaging 25 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists, becoming a first-time All-Star which was well deserved and even managed to score 22 points. Brown has even became tight niche and basically a brother from another mother to Tatum as the two have been through so much together in their young careers. Overall, they just work well as a unit and speak highly about each other. But during the 2021-22 season, with the return of Al Horford and new head coach Ime Udoka, the Celtics actually got off to a rough start, but found their way midway through the season. And when they did get the ball rolling, they did not look back. Jalen has even been able to put up 24 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. He even tallied on a career high where he scored a 50 piece versus the Magic, totaling 11 rebounds and scoring 25 points in the fourth quarter alone in a win. And with a few more surrounding pieces that the Celtics have added to their roster, the Celtics managed to get the second seed in the East behind the Heat, who they managed to beat in the Eastern Conference Finals. With everyone being on the same page from top to bottom on the Celtics, they really been able to mesh well despite the new head coach and different changes around the team. The young exciting duo between Brown and Tatum together have even took that next jump in the postseason by getting their team to the finals. But Brown actually spoke this into existence seven years ago while being a freshman at the University of Cal when he visited Oracle Arena when the Warriors were facing the Cavs in the finals. Seven years later, that dream of facing the Warriors in the finals finally became his reality. And although the Celtics did lose in six games to Golden State while looking out of sort at times, the truth of the matter is this young Celtics team is still developing and it takes time to get to that next level. But as he continues to work on those holes in his game, he truly is an outstanding talent on and off the court. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jalen Brown story.